I'd like to share with you some insight into how to create more energy on your voice. Now, those of you who know me know how passionate I am about helping non-native speakers communicate clearly and effectively with confidence. Now, that can involve intonation work, word stress work, pronunciation. It can also involve exploring areas like breath. I spent years trying to find some of the best strategies, techniques, and ways to improve voice. And this last year, I have found some insights that I wish I had had three, four, five, even eight or nine years ago. But there's no time like the present to delve into the reality of what the solution really is and to start communicating it to people. And I'm excited to share that with you today. However, I'd like to start with a baseline. That is, I'd like you to pause the recording and practice with your own recording equipment, perhaps, if you can record yourself, or if you don't have your cell phone nearby that you can turn on the voice recorder, then simply practice for a moment in your own voice, introducing yourself the way you normally would. This will serve as a baseline, so we can judge whether you're gaining more energy on your voice after doing some of the exercises I'll show you. So for example, I might say, Hi, I'm Rebecca Lindquist with English by the Hour. I help non-native speakers dramatically improve their speech in as little as 10 hours. Now that's my baseline level of energy. So now, pause the recording and try yours. Okay, let's get started. Now there are different ways to create energy on the voice. You may know of some ways. I'm very new to something called Qigong. Many of you may study it and know more about it than I do. I'm no expert. But what I love about it is how it works with chi in the body. And I recently had the opportunity to study with a master for a full week at Esland in Monterey. And I just came back and I'm very excited about it and would like to share some of what I learned with you. Now the first thing is to have energy in your own body. And one thing that I found fascinating, and you can do this with me, again, if you know more about this than I do, feel free to do the techniques that you know the way that you know it. But if you're new to it as well, think of having your legs in line with your sitting bones and what you're basically doing with arms in front of you, now not directly in front and not out to the side, but as if you're grabbing a ball. So let's imagine we have a ball here and our arms are around it, fingers extended, not closed, and we're actually going to bend at the knees. If your knees bother you, think about releasing your back. I found fascinating how much back release is involved in doing this particular brand. I mean, there are 7,000 kinds of Qigong, uh, but the type that I learned, which was Yiquen, uh, there are quite a few ways of creating less tension in the body. And you may have found in the past that your arms would get tired. And I found that I can stand this way for a long period of time now uh, after having done this. There are different positions and the fingers turn out and move. But for now, let's start in one of the first, the very first positions. And you might think of your hands coming up as far as the eyebrows across, but no higher. And also keeping them in front of you in this spherical sort of way like you're holding a ball. Now notice my knees are bent. To check position, you can look down and you should not be able to see your toes. That's the ideal. Now in this position, those of you that have done Qigong before, you know that you can turn like this and put all of your weight on the back leg and hold these positions like this. You can also come back to the center, refocus, and then do this on the other side. Now that I'm leaning here, this arm will go out. And again, I'm still learning, so that's why this is not as smooth as it could be, but it should be smooth like pulling silk. Now, I also like this modality because many of my clients are Chinese, Japanese, Korean, but it doesn't matter. You could be from India or Mexico, Taiwan. You could be from absolutely anywhere. You could be from anywhere in Europe, and you could be from the U.S., just like I am. This still can be extremely helpful because one thing I love is it's not tied to the breath. It's natural breath. I'm not attempting to do a particular type of breath. Now here's the thing though, diaphragmatic breathing as we call it, and that's actually kind of a strange name for it, because we're talking about breathing not necessarily from the diaphragm. We do that in any case. We push the diaphragm. But what we're talking about is breathing from the lower, as low as we can go, the lower abdomen and below. If you put your hands on your abdomen, inhale, See if you can fill your hands with the breath like you're getting larger and larger, but now lean back and as you lean back, exhale. And now inhale forward. Stomach comes out and exhale back. Gently rocking with your feet fully on the ground at your own pace, just letting the breath follow you as you go. Inhaling and exhaling. 
I find this is a very lovely way to begin to breathe without effort. However, as we know with speech, we need energy, not just effortless breath. So notice if I now start to speak, it's very fluid. It sounds effortless, but there's no energy on my voice. So let's get some energy, shall we? Let's do that by creating a couple of ways we can create energy in the body. Now, one way is through movement, also almost like martial art movement, but movement through the same modality of Qigong. So, for example, there's something they call Fa Jing, and again, pardon me on the tones. Uh, however, this type of activity is doing something like what we were doing earlier, again, dropping the back and bending the knees and keeping the legs uh, shoulder width apart, so you're not, or sit, sitting bones, but not too close together or too far apart where you're comfortable, listen to your own body. But now, let's think about adding a little bit of movement. So for example, we could do movement like this. See how it's sharp and more forceful? And if you're doing this correctly and holding your back in a good position, you should begin to feel it in your core. Now, I want to caution you here, however, and pause for a moment. We don't want to hold our core tight or hold our back tight. So the type of exercise you do prior to doing this is very important. If you play tennis, racquetball, swim, dance, run, those are wonderful forms of cardiovascular activity that supports this type of work. If you do stagnant isometric work where you isolate muscles and move them, such as weightlifting, that type of work is going to restrict you here only because we want to relax our muscles and think of ourselves as being liquid, liquid like water and smooth. However, within that smoothness, we can change form at any time and start punching like this because this is how we're going to begin to get energy on the voice. The back is still neutral and relaxed. I'm still breathing. Now I'd like to share with you something that we call Pengji. It's P-E-N-G in the pinyin written out form. Um, I'm sure there's a character for it in Chinese, but the idea is that it's a resilient energy force. It's a rounded body movement. Notice how round my arms are here. I still have the same leg position, forward movement. I can hold this as long as I like. This rounded movement, of course, is useful in the martial arts to keep from hitting a flat surface, right? Hitting a rounded surface and redirecting someone confronting you. But there's another reason for this. The resilient force aspect is that you become stronger and more confident when you stand in this position. And if you're comfortable, you can lower your knees at this point, staying in this position. Of course, you can also go out to the side the way we did earlier and hold that position for a period of time. You can also do it here holding that position for a period of time, all the weight on the back foot without lifting the front foot at all, always coming back to the center and regrounding. You should feel a grounding and an, a, a connection to the earth that you don't feel, I find, in any other modality. It's such a strong grounding and it's so good and supportive of the voice. Now that we're here, let's take our hands forward and pretend you have someone in front of you. In fact, you may want to do this with someone else. We did this with as many as 12 people in my training, and what was fascinating is that you can push out, so pushing forward, and then pushing more gracefully eventually like this. The core is engaged, but also the back, and if you put your open hand on your back, you should be able to feel the breath going forward and back like this. at your own pace, not forced. I'm at the belly button in the front, hand directly behind the back. And as you inhale and exhale, knees still bent, letting the breath come and go as it pleases, your arms will now come here and will go forward and will start to make sounds like, hey. Now the first time I do it, it's in my throat and my pitch is high. So I'm going to keep doing it until I can tell that it's coming from that low abdominal spot that we accessed earlier when we did that crane movement going back. So I'm going to do it and I invite you to do it with me. Going forward, making the sound until you feel a nice resonant sound from your lower belly. Again, inhaling and exhaling, moving out in the back and especially out in the front. The back might take you a while. Now I'm in the zone. Hey, 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 hey. And now I'm going to speak 
and I'm noticing there's a little bit of tightness in my throat, so I'm going to open the throat. I'm going to come back into this position and hold it for a while and see if you could redirect this chi or tingling feeling. This often gets stronger if you work with another person. This can be used for healing as well. So the idea is that this chi or energy can go all the way up my arm and I'm going to direct it into my throat. So I'm going to see how strong my voice can get through directing this energy. Hey! Hey, hey, now it's nice to kind of elongate the sounds because when we go back to speaking, we're going to be elongating. I also recommend that you drink some water with this. And the reason for that is I find vocal fold wise, you can get a little bit of stress around the vocal folds, a little bit of strain from trying to divorce this nature of being strong and and exhaling in a way that's forceful. So there, you, we do want some energy and some force, so we can do it delicately. We need that energy, but we also want our vocal folds to be nourished and not strained. So keep that middle position nice and loose. The core is engaged, but not strained, not too tight. The back is also relaxed, drop down. Hey, hey, hey. Now I'm going to start speaking. Now, let's try, after you do this a couple of times, try to do what you did earlier. Let's get something to compare to our baseline. So you're going to introduce yourself again. And mine would be something like this. Hi, I'm Rebecca Lindquist with English by the Hour. I help non-native speakers dramatically improve their speech in as little as 10 hours. Now, that wasn't perfect. I'm feeling a bit of strain, but I'm feeling much more confidence and strength in my delivery. Let me take a little more water. Let me do a little bit more with energy. So I'm going to try another sound. Besides, hey, I'm going to try getting more breath because I want a little bit of air with this. Shh, 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 shh. Hey, hey. Hi, I'm Rebecca Lindquist with English by the Hour, where I help non-native speakers dramatically improve their speech in as little as 10 hours. Do you notice something different about my conviction and my confidence? So try it yourself. Pause the recording and again introduce yourself. If you recorded before, try comparing this recording to your past recording and then come back. Just curious, what did you find? Did you find that your voice had changed? Did you have more energy? Play with some of these techniques. If you know a lot about an energy experience such as Qigong, a different form of it or a different way of circulating Qi in the body, or you do Tai Chi, for example, then practice with those modalities and just see what you can do to get more energy on your voice through playing around with energy or Qi in the body. And I look forward to seeing you again soon when I'll share more insights with you.